Hurricane Fiona likely to hit Atlantic Canada as intense post-tropical storm. The east coast of Canada bracing for what could be one of the strongest storms to hit the country. The storm is going to hit us, folks. It's going to hit us in the face. And so we have to be ready. Officials warning, it's set to be one for the Canadian record books. But forecasters say there's nothing regular about Fiona. And they're warning people not to underestimate what's coming. Less than 24 hours, we are gonna be under a severe weather alert with intense rain and wind. In two days, Hurricane Fiona is on track to hit the Maritimes, where we live. With winds up to 160 kilometers an hour and up to 150 mils of rainfall. The province has endured this before with power outages, flooding, and road closures. However, we have not. This is our first time enduring hurricane season. Everyone's preparing and we have a lot of work to do. Anyone who lives out this far has a backup generator or some sort of power source to get them through storms. Yeah, she's empty. Okay. With no sun on the radar and our solar system not yet set up, we are gonna make sure our generators are full and ready to go just in case we can't get out of our road, for example. And also this generator runs our 240 volt well pump. Good thing about the hurricane coming, the one good thing, we'll have no problem filling up our rainwater system. <laughs> well, good thing we checked because this one was empty too. <laughs> yeah, full now? I can put a little more in actually, but yeah, this is definitely off grid life. Gotta think about everything. Even if you live in the city though, like this is what everyone's doing. Yeah, that's true out here. To be honest, when we get the full system up, we probably don't have to think about this as much. Not nearly as much, no. It's pretty cool to think we'll be like, Self-sufficient self even in a hurricane. We won't have to worry about the gas station anymore. This is why we're doing it, everyone. <laughs> Nothing like some back roads to get to the gas station. Nothing better. If you're from the Maritimes, you'll know what this tradition is. Storm chips, you need chips to get you through the whole thing. <laughs> oh, they're safe. Safe and sound? Safe and sound. <laughs> These chairs are light as ever. Eee! Maybe not that light, but for the winds that are coming, they'd be flying. I think this can, oh my God. <laughs> I think it's time for the umbrella to go in. I'm really sad right now. It really just clicked out. Summer's out right now. We live for the summer. It's not long enough. You're wearing a though. toque. How did it not click before? <laughs> Lesbians wear toques all the time of the year. This is definitely not what we expected to be doing this week, but here we are. Can you do it? Of course I can. And if I can, the hurricane can. <laughs> Our little table. Importantly, our storm chairs. Can't wait to watch the storm from here. Gotta get a view. What a view. Gotta get the full experience. You're gonna be hiding. Nice, we're making good time. Next. These beautiful tomato plants are probably not gonna make it through this storm, let alone the winter. So this is giving us a head start of getting those in to the warm greenhouse and hopefully they'll be thriving. You know what I just figured out? What? I think Nova Scotia and the East Coast has these hurricanes because everyone in this province is slow moving. So it's just letting us get ahead because if we didn't, we would probably still be sitting on our decks <laughs> talking to each other. Yeah. That's what I just came to Sounds about right. Yep, we fit in perfectly here. 
Although we weren't able to yield a ton from our outdoor gardens this year and next year we have bigger plans, that doesn't mean we won't be growing in the greenhouse all throughout the cold weather winter. Let's take these babies inside. Give them another chance. <laughs> out of luck here, they're still flowering. And they're gonna flower even more in this greenhouse. Beautiful. Everything's gonna be happy one day soon. It already is. It's gonna be happier. Glass doors. I don't think they do too well in hurricanes. <laughs> nope. This isn't meant to keep it super tight. It's just meant to keep it from flying open and smashing back. At least now it can't move too far. If you don't know how to tie knots, tie lots. Great advice. Great advice. Thank you, thank you. Kobe. Gonna need a ladder next year. Okay, hurricane prep is almost done. I'm feeling much more relieved now that we have all our ducks in a row. But I'm just observing the earth right now and listening to it and I can honestly say there's something spooky going on. It just feels different. I think it's gonna hit us. I'm getting like creepy vibes, you know? Not only is it looking different, but it smells and it feels. Like all my senses right now are just like, you better hunker down. Spooky, spooky. This is spooky? You should just go like, use all your five senses out there. It's really weird. You it's just, like, you can just feel it. So calm, and I just can imagine the like raging uh, river to happen. Oh yeah. Like it's so calm right now, but it's like smells and feels like storm. Shit's about to go down. <laughs> We've been taking Ritual for about seven months. I'm so excited to tell you once again about their multivitamin, which has become my daily ritual. These capsules speak for themselves. Ritual thrives on transparency. They source the best and highest quality ingredients, all the while choosing sustainable packaging to ship their products around the world. It's raining again. Of course, we're having a hurricane, girl. Windy, rain. Those are elements of a hurricane. <laughs> The elements in these capsules are nutrients that are really hard to get, such as vitamin E, B12, and omega-3s. For me, getting my omega-3s is super important. And visually seeing what I'm getting still excites me. And the mint tab that comes in every bottle is so refreshing. So minty. They're actually really pretty. They're very pretty. Ritual offers vitamins for everyone, postnatal, prenatal kids, and teens. It's the multivitamin reinvented, and I love it. I can't promise these moves, but I can promise you, you'll get 20% off if you use code 20VANWIVES. Click the link in the description. It's a small step to support a healthy foundation for your body. The hurricane will track northward into the, into the Maritimes late Friday and Saturday as it transitions to a post tropical storm. Does not mean that the storm will be weaker, but its structure will change. It will grow in scale and cover even more territory. Wow, there's... Extremely strong and dangerous. <laughs> All of this firewood needs to stay as dry as possible and with the amount of rain we have coming it would be completely drenched if we didn't cover this up so hopefully by putting a few logs on here the water is going to roll off and roll away and keep it mostly dry. And this is how we stay warm. Yeah. Wood heat baby. So we really got to make sure it stays dry. Good. <laughs> All right, we've gotten a lot done and a lot checked off our list today. However, one of the most important jobs that we need to have done is not done yet. It is almost six o'clock and we're really, really relying on Porter for this. So I hope that he's able to get here before nightfall simply because the garage here behind me still has an open trench beside it. And this trench, if it fills with water, the walls may cave in. Who even knows what's gonna happen with all this nasty weather? We're relying on you, Porter. I really hope you get here. Because if not, I might not be sleeping tonight. He made it! Water! Thank goodness. You can sleep now, babe. <laughs> <laughs> 
another pipe for you. Reporter's yeah. asking me why I'm filming all this because uh, we're in the dark. We're in the dark, but the light pipe. Porter, did you know this is our first ever hurricane season? No. Yeah, we've never experienced it. No. Never. I guess Ontario. Yeah. You guys don't have hurricanes. No. What's it like? Terrible. Terrible, eh? So we really have to do all this and get repaired. <laughs> yeah. And you need to have gas and uh, no power. Well, we're and used to that. The big thing for millennials is no internet. <laughs> High winds. It's have a lot of them. What did you guys do to prepare? Nothing yet. We've been working. That's why I'm here. <laughs> How happy are you? That this is getting filled? Yeah. This is my biggest worry. Yeah. Uh, we were worried about the water washing away this ground and this wall up here in the trench. And creating... the garage doing this. Yeah, or this. <laughs> Hopefully Fiona's not going to be like uh, the last hurri bad hurricane we had, which was Dorian. What was Dorian like? Um, well, we was without power for a week. Wow. Yeah. Todd was also saying that they were without power, or they didn't leave their house for two weeks once. Well, what are you supposed to do? You can't get gas, you can't get anything. Just because yeah. people don't have power at home, think about businesses, society. Mm -hmm. You also look like a ghost. Okay, I think we just made it. We're literally just cleaning up right now, and oh my gosh, Crystal! Canadians are bracing for what could be the strongest storm to ever hit their Canada, their country's coast. Every Nova Scotian should prepare for today and be bracing for impact. Um, yeah, just saying that it could be a category three storm when it hits here. Just very, very intense. So it's not slowing down at the moment. About 1,200 miles from us at the moment. It could be a rare and historic impact. I'm kind of scared. Yeah, it's pretty spooky. Yeah, the numbers that they're showing are, and the stats are pretty intense, so. Numbers don't lie. I'm just glad we got everything done that we got done. And we literally just did it. Like the trench is now. <sighs> Covered. Yeah, pretty wild. So we'll see what the night and tomorrow brings. And I'm not really good in these situations. Is that our street? We're hearing sirens and we've only ever heard sirens once here. Must be really close. I think this part is the most nerve wracking for me just because you don't know what's gonna happen. You basically- You're just anticipating whatever's gonna come. What the news has said and what all the numbers that they've predicted and it could be like that, but it also could not be. It could be like that for some parts and not for other parts. We don't know. Anything. So it's, we don't know anything, yeah. So it's basically you just wait to see how hard it hits your area. Shows no signs of slowing. As much as it's hard to read the news because it really just doesn't leave you much hope, it's really important that you stay updated because at any given time, our signal and cell service can be completely cut off and it can be too windy to even put Starlink out there. We haven't been able to get Izzy off the couch. If you all know Izzy, you'll know she doesn't do good with rain. She has allergies and she becomes very sad and doesn't move from the couch. But there's a problem right now. She hasn't peed in 10 <clears throat> hours and I don't see it in her near future. I think the storm's here. I think that maple may fall down.
Wow, that's a big three. Oh. <laughs> so cold out there. Freezing. I'm so glad we did everything that we did, but um, I feel like this is just the start. <laughs> this is just the start. I think that I, it'll probably hit us between like probably two and six in the morning. That's what the radar is saying. That's what they're saying. So I imagine we'll wake up to it. I hope there's not too much damage. We'll find out tomorrow, won't we? Good night, everyone. Good night. I'm scared to even open the door. We've just woken up. Izzy's been on a pee strike for over 24 hours, refuses to go outside, and now she must go. Finally, wizards. Still a little bit of a spooky morning, but we're gonna take a walk around and see how everything's doing. Oh! Did that come out of the ground right there? Fully out of the ground. Look at that. Where did that come from? It's huge. Thank gosh it fell this way and it didn't fall that way. All right, so far we have one casualty. The tree is down. One massive tree is down, completely oh, uprooted. The storm is not, not, it's not dying over down yet. Anymore. The wind tells us the storm is still here. Are you a meteorologist? 120 kilometer winds that ease in and out, freezing cold, and the van wives have no heat. Their greenhouse is warmer than their cabin. <laughs> Purpose kind of on the wood still? Not exactly. Not so much. Not at all. What a funny feeling to wake up this morning and see all of these massive puddles and to be walking around. Whoa. Whoa, Crystal. <laughs> it's deep. Super wild to be stuck in the cabin experiencing the storm and to come out and see all the puddles of water, everything looking a little bit sideways, including these trellises. The outhouse door is open. The garage door, the greenhouse, everything, um, everything's just looking a little different today. Well, that didn't stay on. That's what I heard last night. I kept hearing something ruffle around at the window. <laughs> oh, the cover fell right off, eh? <laughs> Bella's spunky after staying inside for three days. Talk about cabin fever. That nine-year-old puppy. <laughs> One thing we forgot to look at, our roof. Oh, I didn't forget. <laughs> our roof is still on. I know. That's what we were like, are we good roofers? Certified roofers. <laughs> it's st still on, they're I so know. impressed. It looks great. You all know the famous bridge and it's known to flood. So we're almost at it and I'm getting a little nervous. Well, it still looks intact. The so. bridge is intact, yay! <laughs> we don't need your boat, Nadia. <gasps> the river is so full. Looks like a waterfall. Oh my god. Oh my, god. Oh my gosh. Look at the water in here. <laughs> I want to go for a river bath. This is dry time. This is dry. yeah, I know. We have literally never seen the river this full and moving this fast. It's almost like rapid. This is normally a slow creek if anything. This is a lot of water. It's like easily two to four feet higher than normal, I would say, everywhere. Oh, 100%. You can't even see some of the rocks that used to poke out. Okay, we've officially checked out our entire property with what we can based on the trails. And the storm is picking up, it's very inconsistent. The winds are getting very strong again. So we're gonna head home and check the rest of the roads and trails a bit later when the storm has 
officially passed. Looks like one of the neighbors are coming down the driveway right now to check on us this morning. Just chatting with the neighbors and it's times like these where I realize just how self-sufficient we are and how little we have to think about because we already think about these things on a daily basis. Like having this power station to power the coffee. We aren't without electricity this morning here because we have backup. This is what you gotta do off grid. You think about these things and if I lived in a house, I would certainly have one too because you can never be too safe. 75% of the province is without power or anything. So that's I think she was saying 450,000 people. And, no um, cell reception. Nothing, like no, nothing. And basically the top of the province, Cape Breton, is where they got hit really hard. One of her friend's roof is completely off. Houses have literally just blown away, like blown off. Like imagine, your house gone. Swept away. Swept away. Gone. Like oh. we need to like get informed. We have, we have no cell service obviously either. So like we're just living out here in the woods. I have to say they're like, we are really lucky where we are is just, there's so many trees and trees obviously act as like a barrier. Obviously trees can like hit your house, but I think we've done like a really good job clearing around the cabin for a distance away. Mm -hmm. So And I'm grateful for like where we are right now because it could be so much worse if we were anywhere else. Like coastal anything? Yeah. Yeah. We got really lucky last night. Real lucky. This morning, the governor of Puerto Rico describes the damage from Hurricane Fiona as catastrophic. 95% of the island lost power and remain in the dark still this morning. There are areas that were completely underwater for hours. They were working with utility companies to restore full power to the cellular Finally, sites. tropical storm Fiona caused significant damage across PEI this morning. Reports of downed power lines, broken trees, and other debris continue to pour in as the storm continues to move through the region. Wow. That was quite the update. I have to say, I'm so grateful that we've chose to live this way and to try and be as self-sustaining as possible, really. And I just encourage everyone to no matter where you live, to try and think about it, be a little bit more conscious about everything that we're relying on and how to potentially be a little bit more self-sufficient. Yeah, pretty rough out there. someone up here already cleaning up, eh? That's community. That right there is one of our neighbors and we've never met them before, but they're out here cleaning up all the roads and they were asking if there's any trees on our lane that needed to be taken care of. Everyone's doing their part. Got you, Peter and Dale. <laughs> Dougie, you're all good. Just a table and a chair. I think it's safe to say that we did not plan at all for this week to be like this. I don't think anyone, anyone did. <laughs> <laughs> but we adjusted to the challenges and prepared for our first time ever. Yeah, you just never know what life is going to throw at you and I feel as though we did the best that we can and I think everyone has and community is what you've got at the end of the day. <laughs> Honestly, just with how we live and not always having everything set in stone, we're kind of used to not always have being able to flick a light switch on yeah. or having have water coming out yeah. of the tap. So this is exactly why we live off grid. It's the best feeling to feel empowered on your own and like you can handle things that come your way. And yeah. I think that's the ultimate goal is to continue to seek yeah. out that life and that lifestyle for us because there is no no doubt that sometimes we ask, why are we living like this? Why are we living up there? Yeah, we me do more than you for sure. Yeah. To be honest, this has just reminded me all over again of why we're doing it. I was just gonna say that it was a complete reminder. It definitely makes me a little emotional reflecting on the storm and just, you know, how far we've come and everything we've learned to think, you know, one year ago, we definitely didn't know how to use a chainsaw. Hi mom, I just got your 22 text messages, but everything's good. Okay, I love you, talk to you soon, bye. Oh my gosh, Tyler and Todd said they were gonna drive out here if they didn't hear from us right now. Oh no. <laughs> Although we got very lucky and we we're very grateful based on where we lived, not everyone was so fortunate and we're thinking of all of those that were affected by the storm. And after all that, another peaceful sunset. See you next week. <coughs>